Hey Polish nerdies, it's Karen and Janine. Many of you have asked how Karen, aka Manny Geek, applies UV gel as a base coat for all her nail polish swatches. She's got it down to a super efficient routine. In fact, prepping for her next application is part of her removal process. We'll add a card in the top right corner of the video so you can hot link right to it. If this is your first time doing your own UV gel base, you'll want to push back your cuticles gently, then lightly buff your nails with the finer grit side of a medium fine buffing block. After that, shape your nails with the 180 side of a 100-180 grit nail file. FYI, Manny Geek purchased everything you see in this video. We'll have more details at imabeautygeek.com. So, your nails are all buffed? I'm buffed. I'm buffed. If you have fine ridges, you can buff them down, but the gel will really, it will really level and take care of a lot of the ridges for you. Okay, so you just really have a light touch. A light touch, take the shine off, just the shine. Don't take the nail off, just the shine. Okay, next. Next, I got this pumpy of 100% pure acetone because it's my jam and it's got a little sticker on it. Mm -hmm. That's how I know it's acetone. Uh, cotton round, lint-free cotton round. I'm gonna give my nails a little clean. Why? Well, because you know, acetone breaks down oils and water. And if you touched your nails yeah, with your fingers, Touch your nails with your fingers or with your face or with your hair or whatever you did something touch you just don't, don't touch anything just don't touch anything okay so that's done uh now my nails are dry because the acetone dried them then we got this stuff yes it's red carpet manicure not gelish but it's okay because it's the same stuff it is for maximum adhesion okay. like this carefully because you don't actually want your fingers to touch any of your nails and it's uh, just this clear sort of liquidy stuff and you just go like this, la la la. Oh, and make so you sure smoosh it around. Yeah, just it dries super fast. And you want to make sure that you get the free edge of your nail also because you're gonna put some gel there because you are because I'm gonna tell you to. Okay, so there you go. Sometimes I just go like this because look, it pushes my cuticles back. Okay. We're done playing with the prep. Which is a vitally important step by the way. Alright, so next step. This magical gelish foundation. You can buy this in this size, or you can actually get it in mini. <laughs> and you can buy both of these at Sally Beauty Supply, which is where I got mine. And I got them on sale because sale. Um, let's open this up, being careful not to touch, touch your nails, your nails with course. your other fingers you. or other skin. I can't stress that enough. You get oil on your nails at this point, and Game it's, over. it's over for you. This has a little tiny brush. Look at the way a little tiny stiffy brush. I think we'll see it better on the nail. Oh, it is a little and wee. It's wee. Okay. Which means that you get really good control. Now the other things that uh, we just want to point out, Manny Geek gets a very, very thin super coat. Super thin coat. Because thin is better than thick. It sticks better. Everything's better when it comes to nail polish when you can do it thick. So. Or when you can do it thinner. Thin. Thin is what I mean. That's what I said. Totally what I said. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm going to show you the pull. Now, now my bottle's probably used, so i got to jiggle my brush around. Don't shake this stuff before you use it because you'll get air bubbles. Just roll it around or do what I do and store it on its side. Ah. Oh. I know. Tricky, right? Okay. So this is the pull. This is exactly the way I pull the brush out when I use it. I jam the polish to the sides of the brush and I pull it out clear on one side. That's what I'm going to use on my baby nail. Okay. That much polish. Do it now, do it now. Okay, are you ready? Are you focused? Do you have it? Yes, focused. Okay, I'm starting up here. Look, look, totally just blob polish like that. The beautiful thing about gel is that it doesn't dry on your nail until you toast it. Unless you're doing your nails in direct sunlight, which you don't want oh, to do. Oh yeah, sunlight is bad. Direct sunlight will cure the polish or cure the gel as you're trying to paint your nail. Yeah, that's bad. And it will also harden on the brush and you'll end up with bubbles and be like, what the hell? That's what the hell. You cured it on the brush. Dumbass. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many bottles of um, foundation I've been through because I was stupid and left the shutters open. Oh dear. So there you go. That is a super thin coat of foundation. That's all you need. Like, trust me. You're going you're gonna to think, oh, I need a big blob. No. You can always put more polish on easier than you can take the polish off your nail. So do a thin coat. If it's not enough, add some more. Okay, here's the pull for the second nail. Okay, hang on. I'm getting closer. And focus. That's the pull. There we go. This is the pull. Seriously, smash it off the sides of the brush because that way you, you avoid flooding your sidewalls. 
Scrape the back? And that's my blob. Okay. That's not even a blob. It's invisible. I know. It's enough. Trust me. Let's talk about sidewalls. Uh, don't get your polish on the sidewalls, because it will lift. Don't get your polish on the cuticles, because it will lift. Be perfect. Be precise. Take your time. It doesn't dry. You can work this stuff so easily. And if you are not a precise type of person, if you're not a perfectionist, we've said this before, give up now. Yeah, don't even don't even try. It won't be worth your time. It'll be better to go to somebody who's really, really good. Right. AKA tips in Toronto. Or, you know, <laughs> talk to your friends, see if they have good recommendations of people yeah. that they really like. I know that looks kind of streaky, but it's leveling. Watch, it's leveling. Also too, watch this. I said also too. I should add as well. And in addition. In addition, I should add as well. See, this is the cap of the free edge. That's all you need. You can, like, just wave it over there. Don't get the polish stuck under there, because it'll lift. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's the nail done. Okay. I start up here. It's true. We're doing this almost in slow motion, so you can see. I'm pushing closer and closer to the cuticle. I am not touching the cuticle. Oh, no! I touched the cuticle. Bad, Manny Geek. Oh, shame. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're gonna take a cotton pad, acetone, you're gonna wipe it off like this. And do it. And our... you're gonna go again. Don't even bother trying to clean it up, because it's not gonna work. It's gonna take forever, and it's gonna harden the foundation layer, and you'll never be able to soak it up. You put your prep coat back on like this. You just wait a second, make sure it all evaporates. Blow on it. It's dry. <laughs> and then you go again. I'm used to holding that bottle with my other hand, so this is weird. Okay, start up here. See the blob? And the shape of the brush should push this down into, not into, but right above the cuticle. As close to the cuticle as you can get without actually getting it on the cuticle. Yeah, and you push your cuticles back so you have a little extra room to play. Because yeah. once you re-moisturize, those things are going to get a little nice and juicy and come up higher. And then you'll have perfect you should have a perfect. gap ratio, yeah. as in no gap. Sidewalls, I don't know if you can see the sidewalls. I'm going really close. I'm using my brush as my tool, not just as a brush, but it's everything. You get to know the way of your brush after you do it a few times. Yeah, I have a couple little bumps there, but... But this is a base coat. No, it's it's not terrible. It it's only because my, my, um, my foundation's a little older. And when you start to get lumps and bumps, it's really a good time to throw it out okay. and get a new one. Or maybe it's had too much exposure to sun. And yeah, when it stops performing as it should, get just a new buy one. a new one. They're, you know, for what they do for you, it's they're worth, worth it. Mm -hmm. The foundation is expensive. That bottle I think cost me twenty-eight bucks. Whoa! I believe it was a two for one, or maybe a buy one get one, or something. That's why I always tend to buy that stuff on sale. That coat went on a little thicker than I like. So, you're just so gonna... I'm going to try to get some of it off. Okay. So you just wiped off the brush and now you're trying to get a little yeah. bit off on the I brush. wiped it off on the neck of the bottle. Okay. And the angle here is hard for me because we're filming, but I'm trying to get the sidewall. I'm hoping I made it. So coverage is 100% without getting it on your sidewalls or cuticles. You've capped your free edge like this. Bing, bing. And after doing that, I like to give it a swipe up the middle so you don't end up with a bump of gel. At the tip? At the tip, because that happens to a lot of people mm -hmm. because they cap last. It's okay to cap, just smooth it out afterwards. Okay. And you do get time to play, so give it a second to all level out. And now I'm gonna toast. And by toast, she means cure. I mean cure. The instructions on the gelish bottle say, I don't remember what, but my lamp goes for a set amount of time, and it's on a mirror. Why do you do that, Manny Geek? Well, just to bounce the light around inside a little, a little bit more. There you go. I'm toasting. Now this is a red carpet manicure um, lamp yes. because you initially bought a red carpet manicure kit. kit. Then I ran out of the polish, and I couldn't get to Rexall to get more, so I bought Jellish, knowing that it's the same company. So and, I feel yeah. I feel good about using them because they are scienced to go together. They're and made by the same people. Well, in red carpet manicure, if you want to stick with red carpet manicure, you can. It's a very, very good home kit. A home it's really good. Soak off. It's better than most because it it has a professional strength. It look toasted. Yeah. So mine's got a timer. I don't know how long it is. Forty-five seconds or something like that. 
So the pull for the top coat. So you do one of the base coat, foundation, and yeah. one of top coat. One of top coat. And it's pretty invisible, thin stuff, so try really hard not to overload your brush. Use as small amount as you think you're gonna need. You can always add more. Always, you can always add more. Again, avoid direct sunlight. Otherwise, it'll harden on the It'll harden brush. right on the brush. Now, I'm gonna say a few things about hybrids and gel. Sure. Red Carpet it. Manicure and Gelish are 100% gel. Capping the free edge, look at that, ta-da! Um, also, 100% gel, things like Entity and um, OPI Gel Polish, 100% gel. A hybrid is CND Shellac. It is a combination of nail polish and gel. It's not quite as strong as 100% gel and it doesn't behave exactly the same way. You want to use CND Shellac, you should get a CND lamp. Also, hybrid polishes are not as acetone resistant as gelish or OPI. Gel. Gel. And it's or is and you can't paint manicure. over them and remove with acetone. You just can't. It it's not strong enough. Right. So for your base, if you're going to use um, soak off gel as a base, the Wanna way the our Manny Geek does, yes. then you want to use 100% gel. You don't want to use a hybrid. I'm getting like tiny. I don't even know if you can see that. It's hardly any polish at all, though. And I again, I start way up here, and I push down. I, I can't. I don't know where the polish is. I'm just guessing that I'm doing it right. Because and you've I've done, done it, it. A lot, but you've done it this what? How many years now? Three years. Three years you've done it in a row. These nails have been covered with gel polish for three years in a row, and people say, "Oh, gel polish ruins your nails. It ruins your whatever." It's the fools, not the tools. It's, that's exactly right. If you do this properly, remove it properly, apply it properly, prep properly, you're gold, man. Yeah. And by the way, that little fools, not the tools, is a quote from our friend. Leanne Colley at Tips Nail Bar in Toronto. Okay, so what am I doing now rolling my nails around like that? I'm looking for bubbles. There is a little one, but I don't care. And I'm looking for the, the bloop that you can end up with at the top of your nails. Yeah. I don't like that bloop. It makes me angry. Yeah. Ideally, at this point, you have nothing in your sidewalls, nothing touching your cuticles, nothing on your skin. And if it looks good, if it looks like you have a coat of clear nail polish on, you're good to go. Yeah. And you know what? Don't fret if you don't get it perfect the first time around. Yeah, you know what? I've done this a bunch of times. Yeah. You'll, kind improve, of... you'll improve as you as you go. I've kind of done it a lot. Okay, right. so now we're going to toast like this. Uh, let's see what else we can talk about. We can talk about, okay, uh, if I lay the foundation thick, how can I get it thin before curing? That was a question from um, Abby. Curly Comedy Nail Art. If I lay the foundation down thick, how can I get it thin before curing? Uh, don't lay it down thick. <laughs> Just don't do that. Yeah. You can always put more on, but it's really hard to get stuff off. You know what? If you lay it down too thick, take it off. And yeah, then just remove it and redo. And, yeah. It's faster to redo. Uh, how do you cap the free edge? Yeah, I showed you. I'd like to, how do I do my thumb with a four-finger lamp? Well, I do four fingers, and then I do my thumb. <laughs> how much time should a newbie reasonably set aside to get this right? I thought maybe two hours, but it took me 30 minutes. Well, 30 minutes for the painting is actually a really long time, but to do all the prep and get it perfect, that's, that's not enough time. Like for me, it would take to sit down and do one hand probably 40 minutes. But then again, I need it to be absolutely precise. I need perfection because if I don't achieve perfection, I get lifting. I'm just out of the toaster and I know my fingers don't look so great and there's this tacky layer on top of my gel. Just going to take another one of my cotton pads, put a couple of squidges of acetone on it and gently wipe them. And wipe the free edge too because there's going to be goop on there. And that is because um, soak off gel polish after it's been cured still has a sticky residue on the top. Yeah, it's got that tacky layer. Some people, like if there's, if there's a instructions on the base coat that say wipe before top coat. Jealous you don't have to. And now my fingers look dry and white so cuticle oil. Just like that. That's all I need. A cotton pad with, with water. A couple on of it. squidges of water on it. So it's you know it's damp, it's not soaking wet. Just rehydrating because remember we wiped our fingers with acetone when this whole process began. 
Hey, guess what? So you're ready. I'm done. And you can leave your nails like this if you like. Because That's it will still, it, yes, it'll still provide some nail protection. You'll find that your cuticles will not grow out of control because um, the nail is, seems to be protected already by the gel. And then here, on top of this, you can put any color nail polish you want, as often as you like. There are people out there who will say, you cannot use 100% pure acetone to remove nail polish off of a gelish mani. Uh, I've done it. I've done it a hundred times over a single gel mani, and it's fine. As long as you get excellent coverage, you don't get it on your skin, you don't get it in your sidewalls, and you don't miss places will be fine. What the gel does, it still gives you flexibility. My nails aren't aren't like snapping and breaking and they're still flexible, which is why gel is so incredible. People say they need nail hardeners. No, you don't need a hardener. You need you need something that will bend with your nail in case in case you bend it, it doesn't just snap off.